In this digital domination master course, we talk with Gavin Zuklinski, founder of Acuity Scheduling. He talks about conversions and how a three-person team runs 6,500 business accounts. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. Welcome to Digital Domination Super Summit, where I'm co-hosting with Marco Montemagno. This is where some of the smartest minds in tech share lessons and actionable tips to improve your business. I'm the founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with successful entrepreneurs and leaders. Everyone live in the chat, put your name in, where you're from. Feel free to put your questions throughout. I'm gonna introduce you our guest today, um, we're all very lucky. Gavin Zuklinski, he's the founder of Acuity Scheduling. Uh, Acuity Scheduling has over 6,500 business accounts, uh, 100,000 appointments scheduled each month with just a team of three, and they're growing 15 to 20% per month. He's going to talk about split testing so you can convert more visitors into paying customers. Now, Gavin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I wanted to ask you first, before we get into the bread and butter, which I'm excited to hear, because I know you're the master at testing, doing different split tests. Um, tell us what inspired you to create Acuity Scheduling and a little bit about it. Yeah, so uh, Acuity Scheduling is my baby. It's an uh, online service to help small businesses offer and manage appointments online. So uh, our target customer is just any small business who accepts appointments. And uh, so it came about actually in, in 2006 when I was still in college and um, I was talking with my mom on a car ride home for, from college and we were, we were chatting about the things that she does. And she was spending just a ridiculous amount of time just talking to people. Um, so I, I thought that I could help her out a little bit with that problem. So I created Acuity and then put it out there for a while. Um, and since then, it's just it's grown at an incredible rate. Uh, and then in this past year, I really tried to dedicate time to it. Um, and since then, that's that's when Acuity has really taken off, and in part because of uh, what we're about to talk about today. Yeah, and I'm really excited to hear about your split testing. And I have to say, just as a tool and as a side. I booked everyone for the summit, all the speakers on Acuity. I use Acuity. This isn't a plug for to say go out and use Acuity, but it definitely makes you more productive. Whatever tool you decide to use, because you can just send the link out and they just schedule you put your appointment times that you're available and they just schedule whenever. And so it eliminates, like you said, that conversation. But one of the reasons I became a customer was you have a, a nice looking page. I can easily see what I need to do. Um, your customer service is phenomenal. You get back to people so quickly. So I want you to just jump in and tell us you converted me into a customer. So how, <laughs> and how I, you know, I want to use what you have to say to um, you know have any visitors that visit my website and actually provide value and, and convert them. So I'll let you take over from there and uh, share your screen. And uh, I've, we're in store for a very uh, a great treat today. All right, there you go. Presentation away. Ooh. There we go. All right, can you see everything okay? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, so um, like I said, I, this, I created this a long time ago, and I hadn't always focused on growth as much as I did in this past year. Uh, and then this past year, I really decided to get serious about it. Um, and when I did... Um, I rapidly iterated over a whole bunch of ideas, and this is kind of the process that I went through to go from uh, a, a site that was growing by just a couple users a day to now hundreds of new businesses are signing up each day. And the numbers that you gave earlier were from a couple months ago. Now we're getting well over 125,000 appointments a month. Wow. So our conversion rate has increased by 250%. So a lot of that is just... Um, using these conversion optimization techniques to figure out uh, where we're acquiring people from, where we're weak at, uh, and how we can kind of improve on that. Um, so this is Acuity's site uh, circa February of this past year. 
Um, and you can see a lot of the elements there are, are after we took a good look, the first version of the site was absolutely hideous. This one's a little bit better. Um, between these two, the second one actually uh, converts, I think, um, almost 50% better over that original one. Uh, and then this one is, is the final result after a ton and ton and ton. Uh, and it's not just the home page, though. It's all these different steps in the funnel that have added up to an incredible amount. Um, so. so go back to the first one and tell me, um, tell me what did you change from the first one to the second one? And then what did you change from the second? I mean, not everything, but what you yeah. thought made the biggest difference from the first to the second and the second to the third. Yeah, so just kind of to put this in context, this is just one sliver of how we're getting our users. This is the landing page where they get at. So a lot of the elements that we looked at here were um, you can see the, the headline as it shows up there and the single call to action. Mm -hmm. um, one of the more interesting things before this one is the, the call to action that we changed a lot um, from free sign up to start free now, the way that the headline is shown and everything, uh, and then also pushing the rest of the content up by reorganizing the top to try to strengthen um, the testimonials and how it works and getting people to engage further down on the page too. Um, so a lot of that was with Start Free Now, I think, was a 10% improvement over the other. Uh, the copy on the page, um, the headline actually didn't change. I tried really hard to get rid of that headline, and for mm -hmm. some reason this one that's been with us forever just is so straightforward. It, it converts the best out of anything kind of clever or any different value proposition that we tried. Um, uh, yeah, so I see. So putting that action into instead of just... Um, the first one, which is free sign up, which is mm -hmm. telling them start now for free, that helped in putting the button on the right hand side instead of the left. Yeah, yeah. I think um, in the micro conversion going on to the next step and engagement on the page, moving the copy, the headline to the top and then the copy right there to the right um, increased it by 40%. Uh, and then that button alone was another big change. Uh, it went from just this small little one that was start free to this big long one where you really have no question about what to do right there. There's only one action in there. Um, and then before this, we actually had two buttons right there. One was for a live demo so you could see the site in action. Um, and uh, like we'll talk about a, a little bit later, um, that got a lot of people clicking through but not as many people signing up for accounts. Um, and so kind of the, the whole process that I've gone through in this is going from trying to get a bunch of traffic, which I was thankfully really successful to, to figuring out where we're acquiring our customers and what path they're going through, uh, being able to measure all those steps along the path uh, and from the little bits to the, the long bits, which are where did you come from and are you actually paying me now? Uh, and then kind of looking at each step and iteratively going over, figuring where we're weak, improving on that, going back, figuring out where we're weak and improving on that. So this is one little sliver uh, that probably gets where everybody is the choke point from all our different acquisitions where everybody funnels into the main page and then goes off. Um, so it's one that has done a lot of work on. <laughs> yeah, and I want to mention too, you're going to go into, you know, some people may be thinking, well, you know, conversion is great, but I don't get that much traffic, or I need to improve my traffic. You're going to talk about some of your best tips for that too. Um, but before we get into that, tell me from the second one, the third one, because that looks a lot different from layout and coloring and everything like that. What did you do there? Oh yeah, so this is um, with the other, the original site. Uh, I did a lot on there to try to look at how different copy uh, impacted people, the testimonials, the steps people took. Um, kind of looking at what people's fears are and everything. Uh, and then after a while, it, it came to the point where uh, I had a good enough idea. We iterated over it enough. Um, it was just time for a radical change to address all the issues, all the kind of like a, as you're testing along, you develop all the insights like um, uh, on this one, you can see a lot of people would make it to the main page. Uh, they want to know about certain features, so we try to highlight all the features. Um, each one of those areas is clicked through, so there's a whole lot more content on there. Uh, each one of those areas is also kind of like highlighting the major features in there, being able to accept bookings, like 
promote yourself, that we have really awesome support like you talked about, um, all the way down to being able to accept payment um, and working internationally uh, in, in nearly every country. Um, so you can iterate a little bit, uh, but then eventually it's time for a radical change, and then we realized that and re-looked at the whole site. Do you find uh, that people use their phone a lot more? Because I noticed from the second to the third, you have a little picture, kind of like a mobile, a mobile phone. Yeah. So since uh, since the second one, we've revamped the mobile site a lot and wanted to highlight that a bit more. Um, when this one was out, uh, the mobile site wasn't as good. Uh, you can see it down at the bottom there. There's the screenshot. But yeah, we definitely wanted to highlight that. Uh, the things with both of these designs, though, is that they were both responsive, um, and they were both incredibly fast loading. Uh, and yeah, so uh, like people using it on their mobile device always worked. Yeah, but trying to compress as much information into the smallest space possible because one of the things with appointment scheduling too is that we're spanning a lot of different industries so everybody has different fears and different things that compel them like a, uh, a guidance counselor looking to book appointments in their school probably not as interested in deal daily deals but would be interested in um, being able to do uh, group appointments where like a massage therapist probably more interested in daily deals than being able to um, book in totally different time zones. So that's where the second design really uh, comes at is trying to hit as many different people as we can in our diverse population. So uh, maybe people that are more industry specific would come up with a completely different design for their site and there's a lot of industry specific mm -hmm. appointment scheduling software too. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd be curious to look at theirs. Yeah, so I'll let you get into one of the, the main points, which is getting more traffic. I just want to point out, you know, obviously, like you said, it's a sliver, but one of the things I noticed, one, you kind of revamped the, the look, and but you it was a lot of psychology. You know your customer, and you know what they're thinking when they go to that page. So anyone who has, a, you know, whatever business it is, put those objections up there or put what most people want because it seems like that's what you're highlighting on the page. Yeah, yeah. So I find as we go through all these steps that each test isn't just changing, uh, just throwing a dart at the board and trying to uh, change a color and shift things over and over. Um, I, I try to make sure that all the tests that we're doing have some like kind of bigger underlying thing. There's a lot of the silly ones in there too, but a lot of them are just on like what, what do people actually find valuable? Like what can you highlight? Um, and eventually you learn a lot from this and uh, and then you can kind of distill all that together after you've learned and kind of researched what your customer is. This is this is just a, a lot of experimental research uh, in your website. Uh, and luckily we can use statistical significance to actually figure out what is important instead of just throwing that dart at the board and, and making some guesses and, and taking some uh, qualitative evidence. You actually have quantitative evidence here. Mm. I mean, I could go on and ask you questions all day about this because this is really interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to ask one more before I let you go down to more traffic. Yeah, sure. What was the crazy, like the test that surprised you the most that you thought this is, you know, this may work, it may not, but it, it really worked well? Oh, my gosh. You know, I wouldn't say that it worked well, but the one that surprised me the most is um, changing it, the sign-up form. Uh, for we have three levels of account. One is totally free, and then we have two levels that are paid accounts, $10 a month and $19 a month. Um, I tested out um, changing it, so initially uh, for the paid accounts, you had to put in your credit card, and then I changed it to no credit card, 14-day trial, and you'll be good. Um, the one thing that I found, though, is um, despite what I read online and what everybody else seems to test, Requiring a credit card was way better for revenue. Um, it was, uh, I forget how much, um, uh, it was a decrease probably in 40 to 50% uh, revenue over those users for the ones that didn't have to put in their credit card. It shocked me. I, I had to test that one twice. I thought that I screwed something up with the implementation of it. So you had more sign-ups with the free, but the conversion and the revenue was way better when you actually asked for the credit card, even though it's a free trial? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the premium and pro accounts, the $10 and $19 a month, changing it so 
put in your credit card and you get a 14 day free trial and then begins automatic billing versus don't put in your credit card and then it just nags you once you get to the end of the 14 days to put in your credit card. Um, after I dug into it, it looked like um, although fewer people would actually put in their credit card, um, some of those would go over to free and then after they get a little taste for an upgrade, the other ones who actually did put in their credit card overwhelmingly stuck with it. Um, they seem to just have that extra motivating factor uh, and yeah, so more credit card, more motivation, um, more revenue for us. Yeah, I think that was me actually. My, my user experience was I think I paid for the, um, I used the free account but then I upgraded the the, uh, the middle one and then I then maybe after a couple months just upgraded to the the, the uh, premium one or whatever the, the largest plan is. Yeah, yeah, and that actually that increase in revenue is uh, strictly measuring um, sign-ups to professional and premium without a credit card versus with a credit card. Uh, I didn't actually include the number of users who upgraded from free in that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you find, and I'm going to ask this because I think anyone who has a product, you know, how do you step up from this price point to, to the next price point? And for you, I'm wondering from the middle one to the larger one, what was that? I can tell you from my standpoint of what, what kind of hooked me into doing the larger one. Um, mm -hmm. What, was there anything specifically that like, oh yeah, this is providing way more value, so we're stepping, you know, stepping this up to the premium? Yeah, so um, with all of these accounts, I just really want to help small businesses and, and make sure that they're getting value for the money. So we have incredibly cheap plans compared to our competitors. Uh, and it kind of goes back to, uh, I look at it like, w would I be willing to charge my mom this amount? Um, so I want to make sure that every small business can actually afford it and get something worthwhile, and that's why we'll always have a free plan. But as it goes on, we end up getting some Fortune 500 companies. We get a lot of larger companies that have more staff and more requirements. Um, so we're trying to figure out how can we uh, get more revenue from these people who are sucking up more of our time so that they're not taking up a disproportionate amount of time compared to the small business and we can give each of them kind of the equal amount of attention. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm going through these two, we tested um, some different plan limitations and the top level plan right now is completely unlimited. Um, that may change in the future and that's one of the things that I looked at too is testing uh, what are those things that kind of correspond to how much time somebody takes up for me and a lot of that is how many employees they have, um, how much support, actually it's, it's a lot with how much support they do but I can't charge for support, that would just, that would just be wrong. Um, and and trying to trying to come up with those different things. So I tested uh, different limitations on number of calendars and a bunch of different things. But all of this tried to actually be scientific about. It. And uh, like I was surprised too during one of our tests where uh, we tested having an additional higher priced plan on there that had more features and everything else, and you could have a greater number of staff. Uh, and just having that higher level plan, just the price on there, actually decreased signups for free and the lower priced plans um, overall. Like, just having a larger number on there, less people signed up for free. That one was really surprising too. Yeah, I mean, that's why you test, or that's why you, sh <laughs> yeah. why you, sh why you should test, because most of us probably wouldn't even test it and wouldn't know that was happening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like the credit cards too, a lot of your gut feeling and best practices is not always right for your situation, so that's why you have to test and make sure it's not just a feeling, that there's actually real hard numbers to back up why you're making this business decision. Yeah, so tell us, um, I'll now I'll let you get into getting more traffic because we all want that. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, this is definitely not the focus of the talk, but a prerequisite if you're going to do any sort of type of rigorous testing. Uh, if you're only getting a trickle of customers, you cannot effectively test. Um, you would need to get a, uh, a minimum population to be sure that everything is statistically significant. Uh, a lot of that depends on the amount of lift that you're looking at, um, like we'll talk about later. Um, but more traffic never hurts. Uh, <laughs> so uh, 
what I've found, too, is Acuity ranks in the top one to three uh, results on Google for all of the keywords that we target. Uh, and we haven't done anything really crazy. A lot of what we found is the boring guidance is the best. Uh, look at your users and everything, but the couple of things that I've found really made a difference were uh, earlier in this year, we uh, redesigned the website to be responsive and actually look at mobile devices. Um, and I found just having a faster website, the faster the website loaded, it seemed like the higher we would rank on Google. Hmm. Um, also, uh, it just provides a better user experience for everybody. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is whenever I make a major change to the site, adding a new JavaScript library, something else, uh, test it on my phone. Um, make sure it loads up on the mobile device so you can test it on your desktop, test it on a mobile, make sure that for the widest audience you're providing the best experience and that it also provides the dual role of um, having a kind of low, low bandwidth, high latency device that you can see how your page reacts. Uh, so you can see uh, as, as Google goes to it, is it going to be a fast site? Are your users in India going to have a good experience with it? Um, there's a surprising number of people that just have terrible um, internet connections. Make sure that those do. So uh, that's one of the things that I never test. Always have a fast website, like no matter what. Like, there's no question about that one. And I know there are sites out there, for anyone wondering, I know there are sites where you can probably Google, like, make your site fast on Google, and, like, you can put in your URL, and it tells you some corrective measures of how to make it faster, right? Yeah. I um, seen those. Uh, let's see. I used um, the uh, YSlow, uh, Yahoo's... Um, plug-in for a firebug. Uh, I think that Google has a site speed checker, uh, and a lot of that is uh, minimizing the amount of JavaScript and CSS, uh, different files that you have, kind of minimizing the amount of different connections that you have to do. Um, as we're pushing more people to SSL on our website, too, uh, making sure that um, SSL is loading really fast, because that slows down so much. Um, so now we have a uh, off um, a separate hardware device to do SSL offloading that, that has sped things up a ton and that's made a massive difference too. Yeah, I find that I've, you know, also hosting, like, I host all my images on Amazon S3 or host videos on another site so that the site loads fast and you don't have to worry about, you know, huge storage requirements. Yeah, exactly. And anything that you don't need right away, like a big video, make sure that the loading is deferred. Um, so any JavaScript that you don't need right away, make sure that's loaded asynchronously in the background. So it's not just how fast the everything loads, but how fast it feels to a user to load. Like uh, in the application, too, we started flushing headers earlier on uh, or flushing the site right after the, the top header of the site loaded. Um, just that it feels faster. It didn't actually make it faster, but it made it feel faster, so it gave our users a better experience, too. So what uh, else have you found that's worked with traffic? Uh, yeah, so along with making sure you're talking about all the keywords, you're providing a good experience on mobile, and the f site is fast, just being out there for a while, age is probably the number one most important thing we've found. Um, having my site out there, uh, and then also making sure that it, uh, I, I'm, it, this is really hard to test, but it seems like making sure that everything looks like it's there to stay. Um, I noticed an increase in rankings um, shortly after I re-registered SSL and did a five-year registration instead of a one-year. Uh, I can't say for sure if that's a correlation or causation, um, but it definitely won't hurt. Like, if your business is there for the long run, the longer you're there, the more effort that you take, the register everything for longer, uh, it can only help. Um, and, and then, too, just uh, a lot of, I'd say most of our traffic comes from Google, um, but now we're starting to look at different ways to acquire users, content marketing and everything. Um, a lot of Google ads, too, so... Uh, I think uh, what I'll be talking about next is stepping through your funnel and a lot of those initial points that you're at deal with uh, acquiring users. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to make sure that you're um, 
optimizing each of those places that you acquire your users at too. Um, so we can step forward to that. Yeah. Um, so I want to get you. I'll let you get in and know your funnel. Um, mm -hmm. I want to ask one question on the your traffic. What I know you mentioned, you know, about the keywords, and you guys are really good at being uh, seen on Google and top rankings. What um, search engine things do you think work the best, or that people can implement? I know you mentioned a few, like content marketing, other things. What can one, What's one thing someone could try to increase their their SEO? Uh, Everything that I've done has been like incredibly grassroots and easy. I, I go out and email a lot of blogs um, just directly and try to get links back. Um, uh, but it's uh, getting a lot of that those basic keywords and content in there and, and writing it for the user. Um, one of the things that I found didn't necessarily increase my rankings but got me more click-throughs was checking out for all my keywords how does my page appear in Google uh, is the title actually something compelling like not only does it contain keywords but is it compelling for the user to click on uh, and for the little snippet that Google includes uh, ours for almost every keyword was being pulled from the meta description so uh, by changing that, uh, changing the meta description seemed to increase click-throughs, and I, and I feel like increased click-throughs also corresponds to a higher Google ranking over time. So trying to see with organic search results how you're appearing in the search results, uh, and then just not targeting Google or any silly, crazy tricks like that, but targeting the end user, uh, Google seems to pick up on overall. I see. So you'll kind of see, you'll go on Google, you'll see what your actual listing looks like, and mm -hmm. if the meta description makes sense or doesn't make sense, or you can kind of make it better so the end user finds it more valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, on we don't think to do that. We don't think to do that at all. I don't go and search myself, and you know, I'm just and see what all that description says all the time. So that's yeah, good, and that that's was a good one point. of the biggest improvements too. And on one of our pages, it, Google was pulling a snippet from the page, which was just atrocious instead of the meta description. And as soon as we changed, I changed the meta description to match up with the keywords that we were targeting a little bit better. Then Google switched to using the meta description, and it made me it made me happier. And I think it made our rankings improve too. Nice, thanks. That, that's valuable. Yeah. So know then, your funnel. I'm excited to this. Yeah, so it's kind of going into this is um, where are your users coming from? So this is what what is the flow from when users initially find out about you to up until the point that they are with you and never leaving you ever again because they love you so much. Um, so this is uh, trying to look at where do your users come from? Is it organic Google results? Uh, is it Google AdWords? Um, is it your content marketing campaign, guest blogging, all of those things? That's the the uh, initial acquisition of people, uh, and even within there, there's a couple of different layers uh, where are people searching for um, a, an appointment book, or are they searching for something that does online appointment scheduling? So you have kind of uh, different sales tactics to different people in. Uh, that are, that are searching for your product. And then after you get to one of those pages, uh, one of those steps, what's the next page that they land on? Uh, is it your home page? Is it, a, is it a page that's tailored towards uh, teachers that are trying to schedule appointments for students? Um, and then where would you go from there? Is it to the pricing page, another sign-up form, uh, all those, the... the place in your site, how people flow around there, what information they look at. Uh, and then as they sign up, uh, they get to the sign up form, they fill out their information or their different plan levels, are you, uh, are you selling different products? Um, those are all a lot of the obvious ones. Um, but then that's a, maybe a third of the funnel there. And then I like to look at um, What's the initial experience of your users? Um, when they get onto your site, uh, are they greeted with a, a walkthrough of how to use the software? Um, is it a bulleted list? Is it a PDF getting started guide? Uh, what type of emails are they getting? Um, and then what are the steps that people do after they do sign up? Uh, are there some key things, like in an e-commerce site, uh, they get to your site, they put it in their cart, um, they're going through, do they register for an account after they've completed their purchase? 
Um, are you sending them marketing emails afterwards? Like, how are you engaging with your users after they sign up? Because just getting a sign up is not revenue. Like, the the people that we love are the ones who keep using Acuity day in and day out for your business. Do they keep coming back every single time for all of their purchases? Um, and kind of uh, there's the trailing part of that too is uh, where's the user's end of life with you? Is it that they aren't using a certain feature anymore and then they start to die off? Yeah. Um, so you can correlate someone problem? if they stop using something to they're probably going to drop off. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's not just uh, things that they, there's like in Acuity, there's certain things that people have to do so that we know that we can retain them. Um, like uh, making sure if somebody sets up their availability, we have a significantly higher chance that they'll stick with Acuity overall, so we try to push them to that step. But then there's also things that people can do um, that increase their chances of leaving. Um, so support is one of those. Um, if somebody runs into something that they're struggling with, uh, they are less likely to stay with you. So um, is it their credit card that's failing? Like how, how are your dunning emails to people being done? Um, are you giving them detailed information about how, how to go about correcting the problem? Um, uh, if somebody just drops off overall, do you have a way to go back and, and try to re-engage the user? Um, so all of this is, is kind of the sales funnel, but then also that initial flow. And I like to look at that as just like, how, like the, the kind of what's the funnel for actually retaining a user? Yeah. Um, I think this is valuable. And could you, um, just to give an example so people kind of get an idea, can you walk us through maybe one case um, they could have come from anywhere. Maybe it came from Google AdWords, or maybe it was you know they searched for you know online scheduling in Google, and you know do you send them to the home page or send them to another page? Just and then what they see and why. What yeah, one of those so, users uh, that you target that you kind of walk us through, and so we can kind of see the funnel uh, happen. Yeah. So um, initially, I. Uh, I looked at doing specific pages, so the, the just general flow that we have is uh, Google AdWords or Google Organic are two of the biggest places uh, a user will search for online appointment scheduling software. Um, then they'll go and see the landing page, which is that home page that we saw screenshots of before. Uh, every single user that we acquire goes to that same page. Uh, I do not do any specific landing pages. Personally, I hate them when I get on to those sites. Like, you get onto a page that doesn't tell you all the features of the product. It just tells you about what they think you want to know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I hate that experience. And I we I tried that a little bit with our Google AdWords campaigns. Um, like massage therapists, like welcome massage therapists. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Specific yeah. to them a little bit, and um, it. it I personally, it did not convert nearly as well, and it also required more effort. So uh, since our team is small, uh, I try to do a lot of things to minimize the amount of effort that we have to do. Um, so everybody gets to that same landing page, which is super optimized. Uh, and then they go to the pricing page, the sign-up form. Uh, and then one of the interesting things I found through this is the initial experience is um, was one of our biggest drop-off places. Um, and changing uh, how we do our initial blank slate and how the walkthrough is done um, to get people from signing up and getting that initial page up into engaging with the site and um, creating, uh, creating their availability and getting to that key step uh, increased our retention of users a significant amount. Got it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I also tested, too, was uh, kind of the two levels of our users, where is it people that are searching for uh, just general information about products in your area? Like, uh, for us, uh, online appointment scheduling, are they, are they just looking for information about calendars in general, or are they specifically looking for something to put on their website to accept appointments? Um, targeting both of those, uh, I was able to get decent conversions out of both of those, but when it comes down to measuring uh, how we initially acquired users to the revenue that we make, I've found that um, the 
low level of specific product awareness uh, led to like a lower overall revenue. And I wouldn't know that without testing it and then looking and trying each part of those funnels too. Yeah, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. So the next one I know you're going to talk about, um, which will kind of go a little deeper into this. What's uh -huh. the next what next topic? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, measuring. And this is one of the areas that I messed up with the most. And this is by far the most important thing. So now, now you know what's the flow of a user through your site. And before you can even think about testing, you need to be able to say... Um, what are people doing on here? Where are they clicking? Where is their mouse moving? What are they hovering over? Um, those are the little interactions on the page. How much time are they actually spending on a page? Uh, and then also the, uh, the longer uh, interactions with the site of um, what, uh, what steps are people going through in their account? Um, how much revenue is an individual user making you? Um, uh, I, so there's just, I like to measure every single little interaction that somebody does, but then also have the easy metrics available that I can um, ask questions like, um, for a given AdWords campaign, what percentage of users uh, transferred to uh, like revenue generating users? So that I can go back and say, this specific ad copy got me $15,000 worth of revenue versus mm -hmm. this one ended up only getting $12,000. Uh, and a lot of this is checking out what are the different micro conversions on each page um, and interactions and, and the larger macro ones of uh, for, for a given persona, where did they come from to get to this point where they died off or changed to constantly generating revenue. And there's a lot of tools that I like to use this for, too. Um, uh, Google Analytics is my go-to every day where it tells me, all right, my website got uh, this many conversions. Um, and then I also have a lot of uh, custom tools uh, and behind the scenes in Acuity that are measuring things um, so that I can do a lot of database queries and say, that the number of users who have um, actually activated their accounts uh, by um, setting their availability. Because um, that's a key metric for you that they're, they're going to stay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the ones that I started playing with recently is track.io. Uh, I tried um, uh, Mixpanel and Kiss Metrics, and uh, it didn't stick with me as much. And then I've been really loving track.io lately, which is just in beta. Uh, it makes it really easy for all these things that I'm doing custom measurements for just to send off events and and aggregate it there. That's a good one. Haven't heard of that one. That's good. Yeah, uh, really nice team too. So, uh, but this is this is one that I, I initially uh, I I failed at, and um, you can always ignore data, but you can't go back in time and generate data. Um, so, always measure every possible thing that you can, in my opinion. Um, like one of the new ones that I realized I wasn't measuring is I was measuring overall how many people go from um, activating their free accounts to upgrading, but I wasn't measuring how many people go from clicking the upgrade dialog box to actually upgrading and putting in their credit card and everything. Um, so that's one that I, I actually have to improve our conversion rate on to. Like having an, that abandonment? Yeah, 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 and it's uh, just like a little easy one tiny step pop-up in there, too. I'm uh, curious about that, because I've heard even shopping cart abandonment is huge. Like, even getting someone to that page, you know, where they hit the purchase button, but then they actually check out, I heard there's a huge, um, you know, people kind of going off and not, not finalizing. Yeah, and right now it's actually looking about 50% of the people will click the upgrade dialog and go off. Oh. Um, Significant. Yeah, it is, and you don't know that until you start actually measuring it. Um, so uh, so uh, at the very least, at each point in your funnel, you should be able to tell how many people entered it, how many people exited it, uh, what's the next step that they went on to, um, and kind of if you can, where they came from when they entered it, and then where they went to after they exited it. 
Yeah, I've, I've seen some, when I've been online, seen some extreme measures. I don't know if it's ex extreme, but extreme measures where people try and capture you uh, from the abandonment where I'll hit the whatever it is, buy, and then I'll, I'm like, um, yeah, maybe not, and I'll go off, and it will have an exit pop that says, whoa, what did we do wrong? Where are you, go <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> I know, and those are so annoying, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, you know, it's I, I I notice it more of a just like okay, that's that's interesting that they implement. I wonder if that how much that works or doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if that actually increases the revenue overall or just like uh, it uh, inspires the ire of their user. Because um, like like with our credit card thing, the um, uh, changing from uh, not requiring a credit card. Uh, increased the number of people who went from uh, the sign up page to actually sign or signing up um, but it didn't increase overall revenue so when you add something like an annoying page at the end is it uh, changing it so that the number of users who uh, like fewer people click through but over, over time does some of those users that would have come back don't come back um, right. Are the users that you're keeping around are they um, are they only keeping their account because they thought that was an error message? Like um, that's what that's why you have to measure more than just the single step too. Right. Um, like, are you pushing the wrong people through the funnel? You don't know that until you go for uh, to the final metric. Uh, and for me, the final metric is uh, um, people who are. Uh, go to be paying users for several months, at least three months. Those are the ones that are really valuable. If it's only a month, um, they might have made a mistake. Uh, it, they might still just be trying it out and they don't know yet. Yeah, And that kind of gets into your next uh, topic. Yeah, so now that you actually have numbers, um, you can tell where you're weak. So you know how many people go to your home page and how many people go to the pricing page or how many people are on your uh, sign up form actually create an account um, and you can see where are the significant amount of people entering in there uh, and then uh, just a large number of people exiting They're, like pick your weakest point um, and then try to look at it and understand it um, see are they are they actually going on there and are they scrolling around or are they bouncing off right away? Uh, is there something that's preventing them from doing it? Um, and this is where with the metrics I like to look at the aggregate numbers of everything. Uh, once I get to the step and I'm trying to look at a specific step to see what's the problem and, and where I'm weak and why I'm weak mm -hmm. is I like to look at the individual users and try to understand them. Like uh, To try to push somebody forward you have to reduce what fears they have and uh, increase the uh, amount of compelling um, copy on there to try to push them along so so reduce the reduce the friction and try to push them forward so where were you Gavin where were you weak early on where did you find there were a lot of holes that you were losing you know people are coming in but but leaving with the hole A everywhere <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the the main page was definitely one, and that was like one of the obvious ones. Um, I think one of the most interesting ones was we were getting a lot of people that were clicking through to the sign up form, but weren't actually signing up. Um, so once I started looking at users, oh, so what I did to actually look at users too was um, used a service called Mouseflow, Mouseflow.com, <laughs> which is a tiny bit of JavaScript that let me record the mouse movements of people so it's kind of like taking a recording of them um, and seeing exactly what they do. Uh, my wife saw me doing this and, and she thought it was incredibly creepy that I was watching. It is, it is kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really insightful though because um, you can just see their mouse. Is that what you can see on there? You can see their mouse. You can see them scrolling up and down. You can see them typing information. So then on the sign-up form, what I found um, was that people were, um, there was a, a couple of fields on there, business name, email address, password, and um, a URL where you wanted people to go to schedule their appointments. So they would type in their business name, their email address, type in a password and everything. Uh, the URL was in the middle. They would skip over that and go to the password part. Um, 
And then they'd go back to the URL and they'd hover over it. Um, they'd type in something and there was an Ajax validator on there so they didn't have to click submit so I wasn't seeing that in some of the logs. Uh, and then once I was actually looking on there, I realized that people just didn't know like what their site URL was, like what that was intended to be. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't have known that really without um, like actually just watching people and seeing them stumble over the fields because I... I I could see them like start to type something and delete it, and it was creepy but really insightful. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you just like late at night with popcorn. Your wife yeah. thinks she's gonna come in and watch a movie with you, and you're just <laughs> watching people's mouses. No, nope, no. Nope. Click around. Tonight we're watching a user in Romania fill in a sign-up form. <laughs> you know, we're not watching Breaking Bad or anything. We're watching yeah users you know, clicking around our website. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, like, one of the best practices out there is to reduce the number of form fields that you have users fill out, but a lot of times there's just, like, maybe one field that they're getting hung up on, so you have to be able to figure out what that is. Got it. Um, yeah. And then after I uh, solve that one by just eliminating the field and then automatically generating that through their business name and letting them uh, fill it in later, I found a lot of people would fill in all their information and then not click submit. I would see that mouse hovering over the submit. So strange. Yeah, and it uh, my speculation was that uh, they had some fear about going forward um, and the sign-up page was incredibly minimal and that's one of the things that I tested a lot was having a minimal sign-up page versus having some uh, copy on there to try to reinforce that you are signing up for the professional plan which is ten dollars a month you are on the 14-day trial but then also have things on there to say like this is a secure sign-up form um, give some little trust logo say something like we've been in business since 2006 um, and after adding that in there um, that seemed to push those people forward that had already filled in everything and to actually submit the form yeah, my notice on your sign-up form, there's a, uh, you know, verified and secured, a big thing on the right-hand side, and even lower down on the right-hand side that you can, you know, see pretty readily. Yeah, 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 and uh, I think under the sign-up form top, it says, like, join... Join over 50,000 other businesses with that social proof aspect, like, you're not the only one. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of other people using this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think that had actually uh, had a lift of like 20% through there by adding that one little bit of copy. Nice. So. So the next one I know you have, um, what's the next topic? Yeah, so this is, um, so I, I like to think about that, like where are you weak? You're actually measuring everything um, and then trying to think about it. So like I was saying, um, when I saw that person just hovering their mouse after they filled in every single form, like, why aren't you just submitting it and signing up already? Um, <laughs> try, like, just trying to get into the mind of that one user and, like, figure out, like, what, what are their fears at this point? Um, like, are, are they afraid that I'm just going to start spamming them? Like, if you have a sign-up um, email list, uh, people are afraid that you're just going to sell off their email address. Um, uh, like on the main page, um, uh, you saw in the in the previous screenshots, um, we did that major redesign of the site, which had a uh, overall conversion rate increase of thirty percent over the previous design. Uh, and then after that, um, uh, trying to to think about like what are the fears of the pure people coming on there uh, one of the questions that we had gotten a lot on support like is your site secure well freaking, of course it's secure I'm not gonna do something that's insecure and we do a lot of steps to make sure that people's data stays private yeah. encrypting everything using SSL but that wasn't just that wasn't clear enough on the site to push people, people. don't know that yeah, that you're a master yeah, of security so on the main page changing one little icon to say um, your data is private and secure was another lift of 30%. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, um, so it's not just putting all that information on there to push people forward, but then reducing their fears to uh, 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 get them. And, like, this is where I try to come up with um, a few different tests. So you, you know where you're weak and you have an idea of why you're weak on this. Um, 
So uh, come up with a few tests. Come up with a few really good tests that test uh, different ideas. Is it the social proof aspect that's going to push them forward, or is it the security of it? And do two good tests to test those different things. Don't just move text around and, and try a larger button, but try to figure out what are those fears and eliminate those fears and, and what's actually motivating people and, and push them forward with that. Um, mm -hmm. So I use Visual Website Optimizer to do that through Google AdWords. Um, I'll, uh, uh, I'll test those, uh, run through those numbers manually and all of that. Yeah, I like Visual Website Optimizer too because it's so easy to change things. People, you don't need to be technical at all. Oh my God! You just it's click on the box and you just change it, so it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I'm a technical guy, and then they they do all the math for you too. Because one of the most important things is like, do you actually have enough participants too? Like, make sure that you actually get a thousand participants. Um, so here you can kind of see that private and secure, uh, another thirty percent lift over that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know like a lot of the stuff. You know, sometimes it feels overwhelming and technical, but like you're saying, just use some of these tools and they do the math for you. You know, you mentioned Track.io, Mouseflow, Google Analytics, you know, Visual Website Optimizer. So I would suggest people kind of listen back through and hear some of the sources. So you're not, you know, you get the main concepts of what you're saying and you use them on these tools and you don't have to worry about kind of with a calculator figuring out what the conversions are. Yeah, but if you need a calculator, um, testsignificance.com, I find I use a lot with uh, Google Google AdWords because there's I haven't found something that makes it really dead simple, And but testsignificance.com just does a nice chart that you can look at. Or someone could start a business off of that right now that you feel that <laughs> need for you. I would use that. <laughs> yeah, there you have one customer. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next then? Awesome. Just just waiting. Um, I'm impatient. Like this, it's not that hard. But make sure you have enough people. Uh, something that's uh, might look like it's a losing variation after a few hundred people. It might win after a few thousand. Uh, and that's what I've found a lot is the uh, initial trajectory of something can change once you. Um, just let it run long enough. So don't make any decisions until you have at least a thousand people. Um, even with uh, even with Visual Website Optimizer, like they say, even after it gives you the the victory, like golden cup in there, wait the full week. Like uh, with TestSignificance.com, they give a nice number of make sure you at least have like three thousand participants if you're looking for this amount of lift, uh, and, and just follow those numbers. Like never make a decision too early because chances are it'll be wrong. You want to make sure that if you're making a business decision, you already made the step to, to do A-B testing, uh, do it properly. And I, it, it tries me every time. I never want to wait, but you just have to. Do you end up, if you, if you don't want to wait, let's say, do you just end up going to Google AdWords and setting more traffic, or what do you end up doing? Or do you just, um, yeah. Honestly, it, uh, try to f after say like a thousand participants. It doesn't seem like there is going to be a really obvious outcome. It might just be that there could be a little bit of a lift, but maybe it's just not enough. Uh, and I I try. There's there's so many ways that you can improve that I don't bother doing like the one percent lift. Um, you want the it, biggest changes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're only going to get one percent, don't don't wait the month that it'll take to be statist statistically significant. Bail on that and go back to the drawing board. Figure out somewhere else that you're weak or some other yeah. idea about how to test it because there's probably yeah. something better. Got it. Yeah, um, I like the next slide. It's my favorite. No. I'm just oh kidding. yeah, and now now just profit. End step is always, always profit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, at this point, I just go back, uh, go back. Like your your funnel rarely changes, but um, maybe what you're measuring, you realized in that last test that you needed something else. Um, oh, one of the things that I always do with Visual Website Optimizer is I just have a ton of different metrics in there. Um, make sure you always have one micro conversion step on there uh, to give you an early idea about which one's going to win, but also a macro conversion step to make sure that you might have changed the copy to improve the number of people that go through, but are you actually pushing the number of people that will go through and turn into um, revenue customers, or are you just pushing people through because they think that they're going somewhere else? 
Um, so what would be an example for you for a micro and macro example? Um, uh, uh, again, going back to our sign-up form, um, uh, submitting the form is one, uh, but then going back and turning into a revenue customer is another. So whenever I test the landing page, um, I always have uh, uh, a metric for engagement, a metric for number of people that go to the sign-up form, a number of people that go to our pricing page in each of those different points, uh, number of people that sign up for professional versus premium versus free, and then also number of people who actually sign up. Um, and then uh, after a while, too, I'll try to look at some of my custom metrics uh, for users that are tagged with different tests and see how many of those turned into, like, um, revenue-realizing customers. Okay. So, like I said before, you can, you can always ignore data, but it's really hard to generate data after the fact. Mm -hmm. So measure more than you need. Yeah. And so the next... Uh, the next is you listed some of the things so people can kind of see uh, the resources now that we've been talking about them, or anything yeah. anything else left on the um, the profit side that we missed. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's that's mostly it. It's so, all the foundation with the other stuff. Yeah. So, that, so and each of these resources, uh, I should have put track.io on here for. Uh, track.io is fantastic for measuring testsignificance.com to make sure that you just have enough. Um, have enough people in your population for your test, visual website optimizer for executing it, Google Analytics overall, and then uh, mouse flow for when you want to be creepy and look over other people's shoulders to see what's actually happening. That's great. I love this. And uh, Gavin, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull some of the questions. Um, so if you want to come back on um, and answer a few questions, and uh, I will pull them up while you um, shift from your screen back to you and, hey, uh, and refresh it and uh, uh, refresh your page. Oh. And um, what I'll do is uh, there's a few main things I want to ask about, which is uh, some of the things that have worked with the ad copy. So um, right. I will uh, pull up these questions. You may want to pull up your bottom third. Um, really quickly too. And uh, so the first question while you're pulling that up is about ad copy that works. You know, um, you, you talked about some of the things that people can do to increase um, SEO and rankings. Um, and I know a big thing is, you know, if we are impatient and you want to just go purchase ads, um, what are some things that have worked with ad copy that you found? Um, so this is one, too, where the difference between micro-conversion, which is uh, like your click-through rate, and turning into revenue-generating customers is really important. Um, I've done a lot of tests with um, uh, appealing to a broad number of people. Like one of my uh, ad copies was just uh, about booking appointments, and then I realized afterwards that people who were just looking to book an appointment with somebody else would click through, and I had a ridiculous number of people from the Philippines start to click through. So that turned out to be a good one in Google, it looked like, but was not a really good one overall. Um, and that, that was really insightful to look at. But um, I test a lot with like dynamic keyword insertion, and I've had really good luck with that increasing my click-through rates. Um, customizing the URL, that sh like the display URL in the Google Ads, also increased. Um, like in the ad copy itself, I don't include anything about free, but in the URL, I can include start free now, even though that's not a real URL on my site, and I've had a lot of success with that. Okay. Another big question: If anyone has questions, just ask them in the box. I'm checking them. Is now you mentioned a team of three, mm -hmm. you have a team of three, and you have tons of customers, tons of signups every month. How do you manage that with the support? And and I know from personal experience that it's very quick. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, most of our users are in the same rough time zone as us. Uh, so besides me, there's one other person who works on support full time. Um, Behind the scenes, uh, one of the things that we did recently to increase support time is um, uh, I have a, just a cron job on one of my other servers that'll go out, it'll reach out. I use Help Scout for support and love that. Um, and look at 
how, like once we get over a certain number of emails through there, or the oldest email is over 45 minutes, it'll send uh, both of us working on support a text message so that we can get through there quickly. Um, that and it's also linked up to a campfire room, which will pop up anytime a new email is in there. Nice. Yeah, Nick from Help Scout will be doing a session also, so that will be ah, fun. Ah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I have loved using that. It, it helps collaborating with multiple people a whole lot easier. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so, one last question, um, and I really appreciate your time, Gav. I know it's late there, and it's even later uh, for some of the people in Europe. I think it's like one or two in the morning, but. Um, What's been, a lot has gone really well and things are going great. What's been a big challenge for you and the company? Uh, there have definitely been a lot of just different uh, challenges over the past year and a lot of different things that we're focusing on. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to just channel in on, like to get back to support, is just making sure that everything is as easy to use as possible. Um, Having something that's easy to use just makes our, our customers happier and also decreases our support load so we're able to just scale so much better. Uh, that's one of the things that we're focusing on. Um, and, and overall, I, like, I just want small businesses to have a really fantastic experience with Acuity, so we're always looking to uh, uh, add features that all of our users will find valuable and, and um make things like the speed of the site, the customer support, those things that aren't necessarily features in the site, but um, everybody loves. They're essential for users. Yeah, yeah. No matter who you are, you want a fast site with fast support uh, that provides all the features you have and that you can figure out easily. And that's always something that you have to continually focus on and, and one of the things that will keep going for this, this year. Yeah. Gavin, I want to be the first one to thank you. Where can people find out more? Give them URL, places to say thank you uh, for you. Oh, excellent. So uh, Acuity Scheduling, of course. Uh, Acuity you can see it right under his... Yeah, right at the bottom there. Uh, you can go there. Uh, you can email me directly, uh, Gavin, G-A-V-I-N, at acuityscheduling.com if you have any questions at all, or support at acuityscheduling.com. Might actually get you a response a lot faster from me. So. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Gavin. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure, and this was uh, eye-opening. Oh, Thank you so much, Jeremy. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening.